Do bigger builders offer better value? Choosing the right builder has never been more important given what has been happening in the construction industry over the past few years. But how as a consumer are you able to differentiate between the good, the bad and the insolvent when a silver tongued salesperson is telling you all the right things? I'm Ryan Stannard from Stannard Family Homes. We custom design and build unique homes for families in Adelaide. Despite the challenges and the lack of financial information in the public domain, it is impossible to identify companies like Porter Davis well in advance of their eventual demise. However, it does require a bit of independent research and adherence to the core values that we have at Stannard Family Homes, which is to trust but verify. The professional salesperson you are engaging with has a dilemma. Their income depends on them not accepting the gravity of the situation their building company finds itself in. It's not that they're deliberately trying to deceive you, it's simply a case of if you knew what they knew, you would never hand over a deposit, which means their income would dry up quickly. Which is why they convince themselves that everything will be okay and their clients will be fine. I can't tell you how many times I've been told by the consumers that their salesperson has promised them the earth and assured them that everything will be fine. It's like putting the fox in charge of the chickens. Trust but verify. It's so important you do this in order to protect yourselves. However, before I get into some practical tips that will enable you to do just that, I need to address the common myth that has existed in our industry for quite some time now. That is, that large building companies, the volume builders with display homes and large sales teams are more financially stable than smaller builders. So let me explain why this is the exact opposite. During the construction boom triggered by COVID, the volume builders with their large sales teams signed up three, four, and in some cases five times the number of contracts they would normally sign in a 12 month period. The problem with taking on all that work is that they did not have the resources to deliver three, four or five times the number of homes they would normally build in a 12 month period. This meant contracts had to be queued sequentially over a three year period. Normally, that would be a good thing for a builder and a frustrating experience for the consumer. However, because these were all fixed price contracts with no cost escalation clauses, it meant that as soon as construction costs increased by 10%, they started losing money. Which is why so many of these large building companies collapse with massive debts taking consumer deposits with them. Conversely, according to the data collected by the Association of Professional Builders, small building companies only took on an extra 10% in signed contracts during this period. Don't get me wrong, as a builder, every one of us lost money on at least one of these contracts during this period. However, our losses were limited and were more than covered by the cash a professionally run building company holds in reserve for situations like this. This is why you've seen plenty of large building companies fail over the past few years, while the small, professional operators have been able to pay their bills on time and continue trading. Which is why the small builders are now considered far more financially stable than their larger competitors. The other thing I should mention is that when a professional building company accepts a deposit for a building contract, they are legally required to have an insurance in place which will cover you should the company go into liquidation. So always make sure you cite the insurance certificate within an agreed time frame, otherwise you are effectively uninsured. Rather than blindly listening to a salesperson or trust a building company based on its size, and the number of years it's been operating for. Here are some practical tips that will help you assess what may be going on behind closed doors right now. The most important thing you can do is check out online reviews. If the company has a large number of client builds that have been unreasonably delayed, then this issue will normally come to light in customer reviews. Obviously no business is immune from a bad review. And reading about an unhappy client's experience is not an immediate disqualifier. However, delays can be caused by cash flow shortages, so it should raise questions that need to be answered by the builder. Visiting sites can also be a source of good information. 
If subcontractors are not being paid on time, they are normally happy to share that information with anyone that cares to ask. Another check you should always make before engaging a builder is review of their building license. It goes without saying that you should only contract a licensed builder. However, there is so much more you can do rather than assume a licensed builder will deliver you a quality home. A quick check on the Consumer and Business Services website will reveal if the company you are speaking with has an active license. How long have they been licensed? The type of work they are licensed to carry out, as well as any suspensions or disciplinary actions that may have occurred in the past. It doesn't matter if you're building your first home or if you've built many times before. Designing a new home can be very overwhelming. And when you hear new things for the first time, it's not easy to remember everything. All the tips I've covered here are just a small sample of the information I need to share with you to ensure you are well informed when you get started on the design process. So I've put together a quick guide for you to download. It's completely free and will help you to keep your design on budget and avoid any nasty surprises that can sneak up on you when building a custom home. Just click on the link below and let me know the email address you'd like me to send it to.